Hi, this is Josh with Resort TV One, and today I'm at Epcot, and I'm going to take you on a vlog stroll in 4K60. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to leave us a like and a comment, as well as subscribe and hit that notification bell if you haven't already done so. Also, be sure to follow us on social media. We're Resort TV One on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So let's get started with this vlog stroll. Now, just in case this is your first vlog stroll you've ever watched, we do a lot of relaxing strolls where I don't talk at all, and we will still continue to do those, so don't worry. If that's one of your favorite things to watch on the channel, we love making them too, and we will continue to make relaxing strolls for as long as we can. But we also wanted to try something new with these vlog strolls, and this is the second time that we've done this where I offer some commentary along with the stroll around. So it's a little bit different than a regular vlog in that I don't cut it up as much, and it's more of just really a stroll around the area. But I also get to offer commentary and different from a live stream, there's no chat to read, so all of the thoughts will be my own. So it's a little bit different format. So leave me a comment and let me know what you think of this new format that we're trying. I love the Epcot entrance music. You can hear it in the background as we're walking through here. And if you hear wind noise, it is very, very windy here. But it's usually windy here at the entrance. Of course, you hear that announcement quite a bit, but it's good to remind everybody what they're supposed to do. And I started out by showing this amazing new fountain, these lucite pylons over here, as they call them. They're absolutely amazing. And, uh, they are going to be awesome when they open this up here. Hopefully later this fall, they get this fountain done. And they're going to be lit up with all kinds of different lighting. And they're going to be absolutely beautiful at night. Let me get a zoom on these for you. And there we go. Aren't they beautiful? Wow. I love that original Epcot logo. So glad they're getting back to that. They kind of let it go by the wayside um, in the uh, late 90s and early 2000s. But uh, it is back and they've been using it a lot more frequently lately, so those are gonna be awesome. And we actually do have a, a tropical storm coming through, but it's on the other side of the state, so that will make it more windy today. But luckily, we're not supposed to get much rain over here in the Orlando area. It's mostly on the west coast of the state. The Spaceship Earth actually does create some wind currents that are a little bit stronger than normal in the rest of the park, so fun fact about Spaceship Earth here there actually are water channels and uh, they channel the water away from Spaceship Earth and out into the World Showcase Lagoon so that when it does rain, it doesn't drip all over everyone. So that's pretty awesome. If you've ever been here during a rainstorm, it really doesn't drip around here that much. And of course, if you've been to Epcot since all the walls went up, a little bit earlier uh, last year, I guess, was the end of 2019 and the beginning of 2020 when all the walls really started going up. You have two choices when you enter the park. You can go to the left here, and you can go towards Test Track, Mission Space, and of course, eventually, World Showcase and the Odyssey Pavilion. Or you can go over there to the right and go over towards Living Seas, the Land, and Imagination. So keep that in mind, because uh, if you do end up going the wrong way, you'll end up walking a lot more, because uh, there's no path through the middle here. So like, if I keep going up this direction, you'll actually only be able to get to the back of Spaceship Earth. And so uh, that's something you'll uh, learn pretty quickly when you're here, is that it takes longer to get from one side of Future World to the other. World Showcase is not really affected very much by all this construction. Most of the construction, like on Ratatouille, is kind of behind the scenes. But Future World is massively affected, and of course, with the shutdown, we don't really know how much of their original plan they are going to go ahead and go through with. So we're hoping they do some, and they're ho we're hoping they do most of it, but beyond this wall here is really a lot of empty space where, where the uh, Future World Interventions Plaza used to be, with the fountain and everything else. And of course, Guest Relations is still over here, but there you can get a better shot, and you can kind of see Normally you couldn't see very much of the Imagination Pavilion there before they took down part of the old Communicore Interventions building, but you can see half of it was taken down and then the other half was left when the construction 
was uh, halted during the closure, so you can get a little bit closer shot of it. Pretty interesting, but I do hope they figure out something productive to do with it. And they are still working on Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic Rewind, so that'll be really cool to see when it opens up. Luckily, Cosmic Rewind and the Ratatouille ride were far enough along that they decided to continue construction on those after some brief delays earlier in the spring, so that's the good news on that. But of course, you see the monorail track. No monorails are operating here at Epcot right now because there's no park hopping. So if you want to get to the Magic Kingdom resorts, you have to take a bus. Normally they would take monorails, but now it's bus transportation. And I think that makes sense because if they had the monorail going, I think people would kind of fall into old habits and think that they could park hop like they used to be able to, and it would cause a lot of issues at the monorail gate, people getting confused about wanting to go over to Magic Kingdom and vice versa. So, And I'm sure it also saves them a little bit of money along the way as well. And the wind is really, really strong. I've got windscreens on, but I imagine you're still hearing it somewhat. By the way, a little trivia for you. You can see where this side of the Interventions slash former Communicore building juts out basically all the way to the monorail track and then the rest of the building doesn't. That was actually an extension that was done for, I believe, the Astuter Computer Review Show that was back there. So there are still some of the uh, main Epcot computers and control systems back there in that building. And they used to give guests a tour and a show of those buildings. So kind of a little fun fact there. They don't anymore, of course, but that was back when computers were more of a novelty. And it was really neat for people to see how this amazing technological marvel of a park actually operated. And there you can see on the top of the former Universe of Energy Pavilion, first of all, of course, the colors are changed, but also the solar panels were removed a while back. And they put just these kind of metal grates on top of them to continue with the theming. I'm not sure how they're gonna finish it, but I know they've said that the solar panels are no longer going to be a part of the pavilion, which is kind of unfortunate. It would have been nice to have those remain there so that the pavilion would still have its uh, kind of environmentally friendly energy roots. Now something you can't normally see, I'll zoom just a little bit here, is the Mission Space Show Building. And because of some of the trees and things and um, buildings that have been taken out there, you can actually see the show building there and you normally can't. And if you haven't been here for a while, Mouse Gear is right here on this side. You have to actually walk around this side of Future World to get there because the former location of Mouse Gear is under construction right now. And uh, I'm not sure how far along they are with it, but even the uh, former home of the Electric Umbrella is under construction. So they're supposed to be putting Mouse Gear back where it was. This building was never slated for demolition, luckily, so it's supposed to remain. But it'll be interesting to see what happens and when that resumes when they start putting things back together. So, But as of now, even though you can see the land pavilion over there, and used to be just a really short little walk over there, or relatively short, I should say, up got to Big Park, now you have to go all the way around so it's a lot longer so like if i wanted to get here from here to the seas it's actually going to be quicker to walk back around by spaceship earth rather than try and walk across where you can't go anymore so or even walking all the way around by uh, the odyssey building and by test track
then one pretty recent development here is that these restrooms right across from test track are open now so that's nice i doubt that there's a lot of changes but they did refurbish them so it really was pretty far before when they had these open we were here last week and if you wanted to go to the restroom you had to go all the way up here to the uh, odyssey building just adjacent to test track so it's nice to have restrooms again on this side of future world that are easily accessible from every location here especially since it's so much harder to get to the other side of future world and by the way if you're curious towards spaceship earth is north and so therefore this is future world east over here and the side with the land is actually future world west Sounds like test track is either closed for cleaning or some kind of a delay. Sounds like it's working though. A 75 minute wait. So it's still pretty popular. And things have been getting more and more crowded here at the park, which actually is a good thing. Even though we missed the low crowds, we knew they weren't going to last forever. And um, it'll be good for them maybe to get some higher crowds. They can start increasing the park hours again. That sound is really relaxing for sure. Just hearing those cars go by. I will say the one thing that's different, the monorail was such a big part of Future World here and even the front part of World Showcase where you could just see it going by and it was something unique. A lot of good picture opportunities and things like that. And so it'll be nice when the monorail comes back over here. And there you can actually see all the way through the building where Mouse Gear used to be. So that's a pretty interesting shot there. You can actually see all the way through to the other building on the other side. So definitely a lot of work to do before that reopens. But they've got these tables here, which is nice. You can grab any food and wine festival stuff and come over here. Like there is a booth over here, which is supposed to open later this fall. So maybe they're getting these tables ready for that doesn't say yet what it's going to feature but it's pretty interesting and Liam actually really loves this playground but of course it's closed due to uh, safety reasons and not really being able to keep it clean enough you know for kids to play on it it's harder of course if you've got young children you know it's hard to get them to wash their hands and not touch their face and all that so definitely a good call to keep that closed until things get a little bit more calmed down with the virus. It's a good view of a bunch of walls and uh, the Imagination Pavilion as well as the part of the torn down part of uh, Interventions over there. Always a good view over to the Odyssey, which of course is the Epcot Experience now, or the Epcot Preview Center. Now they've changed some of that to reflect some of the things that have been canceled, such as the uh, Mary Poppins ride has unfortunately been at least postponed for now. They may bring it back later since they've got plans for it already. That along with the Spaceship Earth refurbishment was postponed. Actually, I think a lot of people were relieved about Spaceship Earth because uh, even though I'd love to see the ending get a refurb, I was a little worried about some of the classic scenes in the beginning. So at least we'll get to continue to enjoy Spaceship Earth for a while. For 
I don't know if you could hear that, but they're also adding into the announcements now that face coverings must fully cover your nose and mouth, which is a good reminder. A lot of people like to let their nose creep out of there a little bit, so. Now, of course, right here used to be the pathway into the Illuminations Plaza. But you can see, again, the signage where you can figure out which way you want to go and hopefully save some steps. The nice thing is that main pathway behind me Heading up to World Showcase is still open, so that's good. It's always a nice way to walk through there, but then you have to choose a direction. You can't go straight through. At least not for now. And unfortunately, they had all the flowers here and then everything closed, and they actually ended up taking them out and putting the grass back in. So it's always good to enjoy these flowers a little bit in the spring and the early summer. But the parks were closed for a lot of that time, so... I went ahead and put the grass back in rather than trying to maintain the flowers when there were no guests here. Makes sense. Just makes me excited to see it again next year. It does make you wonder though, how many people, how many cast members were working here during the closure? You know, they have to keep everything maintained. They have to keep everything clean. They've got to keep buildings and rides maintained. So I just wonder how many people were working here. Of course, security as well, just to make sure nobody's trying to sneak around in here. So, I bet there was still a pretty sizable amount of cast members here during that time. There's another view of the partially torn down Interventions building here. The Interventions West, formerly Communicor West. By the way, leave a comment if you know what I'm talking about when I say Communicore. Or leave a comment if you've never heard that before and have no idea why I keep saying that. <laughs> be interesting to see how many people remember or at least have learned that it was once called that and how many people had actually been there when it was called that. There's another view. And you can also see Guardians of the Galaxy back there. Now if you'll notice, this side has a lot of water and a lot of round kind of arc shapes in the landscaping. And if you go over to Future World East on the other side where I just was, there's no water except for over by Odyssey, which is not technically in the land. There's no water and uh, all of the planters and things are shaped in straight lines and uh, angles and corners. That was done purposely because they felt like this was more the earth and the softer side of Future World. And then the other side was more the energy and you know physical sciences and things like that. A side of things so they made it a little bit more um, angular and uh, more mathematically shaped or geometrically shaped maybe is a better way to say it I mean technically I guess arcs are a geometric shape too but you know what I'm trying to say just not saying it very well And of course, we still miss the original journey into imagination. We're glad Figment's back, but that original ride was incredible. Along with the Image Works, which used to be upstairs, and now that's a DVC lounge. I actually don't think that lounge is open right now. Not sure. 
you know what? Let's go check it out. This is the vlog stroll and we don't have to worry about signal. There's no signal in there, but we don't have to worry about signal on this one. And this is gonna be a pretty long stroll, so we'll probably fit at least part of a ride on it. That was one request we had last time and a very reasonable request. So we'll probably get at least one ride on here. People were saying, well, you know, you're not bound by signal issues on these vlog strolls, so do some rides. I was like, that's a great idea. Because right when you go in this door is about where it dies, but you don't have to worry about it. Oh, it looks like it is open. We got a cast member there talking to people. We also have Vacation Club merch, which is pretty cool to see here in the Imagination Pavilion. Okay, so it is open. Really beautiful up there. You can see the atrium. Everything is very, very nice up there. Good views, great architecture. Always nice when we have DVC friends here that can uh, take us up there. One of these days we might grab a small DVC membership too, but right now it's hard to justify because, of course, they're, uh, you know, we live here, so it's easier just to book a resort stay if we really want to do that. There's the Ralph and Vanellope meet and greet and the link. It's really cool how they did that. It's like they walk right in and out of the uh, tunnel to the internet there. But everything else here is shut down because of social distancing and uh, sanitation concerns. Even the little pressure point play area there where you can stomp on those squares and get all kinds of sounds. Everything's shut down. It does look like these are still going though. Oh uh, no, it's just, just music. Not too long ago, we were doing a video here and one of these was having a problem and it looked like it was still running Windows 95, which was, or Windows 98 maybe, which was incredible. <laughs> I guess if it's working, why, why change it, right? There's the part of the queue over there. Kind of cool to be able to take you guys through here. We don't normally do this. I remember this used to be part of the original ride. There's Imagination Land from Inside Out. I believe right before the closure, we came over here and we met. We were with Joey and his family. We met um, some of the Inside Out characters over here before things shut down. So they weren't really there that long, I don't think. Totally understand. Cast member was saying his brain stopped working for a second. Happens to me all the time, especially on live streams <laughs> or on vlogs, and I have to redo a segment because I couldn't quite get the words out correctly. It's a great place to stroll still. So they don't have these 
particular dancing fountains going here. They have the little ones over here. At least they had them going a little bit in this area. There they go. But everything else is shut down. They used to have a character meet and greet there, which of course is shut down too. That was for uh, Disney Visa card holders. Like they need to wash the windows on the outside of the Imagination Pavilion there, but imagine they're stretched a little bit thin right now. So leave me a comment and let me know if you like this uncut vlog style stroll format again. One of the things I think that I was mentioning earlier, it is really different than what a lot of people are doing right now and what, even what we do a lot of times, in that they're not really, these strolls are not cut up at all. You know, I might stop and start for just a second to fix something or, you know, just to catch a breath, but for the most part, it's uncut. I'm not jumping you from one place to the next like a lot of vlogs do. And I think I like those vlogs too, don't get me wrong. You know, it's nice to sometimes just see highlights of people's day but this more of a long format where you're seeing everything including the walks between everything with no real uh, cuts or breaks just let me know if that's something you enjoy or uh, if you do prefer the more cut up style or if you prefer when I don't talk at all and just let you enjoy the scenery Let's head over this way by imagination. And of course we don't, they usually have some characters over here at different times. Sometimes they'll have Winnie the Pooh, sometimes they'll have Joy from Inside Out, so that's pretty cool. Wanted to stop for a second there and check the lens since I was over that by that waterfall. I wanted to make sure it didn't get any drops of water on it. That's one of the most frustrating things if you film something and then you realize that for the last however many minutes of filming, there was water on the lens. she is. I zoomed in a little bit over there. She's having fun over by the other side of the Imagination Pavilion. Dancing around and just being herself. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's neat too because they've come up with these really creative ways to showcase the characters in a socially distanced manner, which is very creative and very much a Disney thing to do. Here she comes. She's got a stick and she's fishing. She does that sometimes. All right, let's move on down the path here in Future World. Maybe we'll go back down here and see about taking a ride on Spaceship Earth since we can't normally do that on the streams. 
and I won't show the whole ride in this case I'll just do some snippets of it hello thank you <laughs> Hello, thank you. I love the land area music trivia here for you. Now let's go on in and take a look real quick. Just trying to decide, but trivia for you about the background music here. It's actually the original background music, one of the only ones left in the park that was the same. Now, as it is, or as it was on opening day. So I should have said it is the same now as it was on opening day. I really messed up my grammar there, but you get the point. Some of the other ones that are still the same are some of the World Showcase area music loops. I believe Canada is the same. I think Italy. I'm not sure about some of the rest of them. Okay, so we're coming to the land. Enjoy. Well, let's take a lap at the pavilion. Why not? Not too busy in here. At least not compared to normal. If you saw an Epcot history video, this has changed so much since the park opened. The background music is the same outside, but the inside of this pavilion is so different. It's incredibly different. There used to be a big fountain in the middle there. And these little areas for the Four Seasons, they actually, of course, didn't exist. Everything was kind of unified around the central fountain. So, just interesting to see how things change. And of course, those balloons in the middle used to move up and down. But at least they're still there. go down and back up and then we'll head over to Spaceship Earth. Only 15 minutes for the land and probably less than that actually. The line is very, very short. I will say, I think one of the reasons that they did this is to have more definitive traffic pathways through here, where before you kind of had to walk around tables and things and it was a little bit more haphazard in the way it was laid out. So when Soren came in, I know they knew it would be popular and they got ready for the traffic flow change. Soren is currently 35, which again, for the middle of the day is not bad. There's Mickey and Pluto. <laughs> They're here at the Garden Grill, the only turning restaurant on property. It takes you through some of the scenery you can kind of see over there from the Living with the Lamb boat ride. So it's always been fascinating to me to hang out there in that restaurant and kind of watch parts of the ride go by.
These mosaics over here are so cool. Always enjoyed that view. It's kind of hard to see against the clouds there, but of the imagination pavilion. Oh, it's a great view of Spaceship Earth there as well, even with the wall in the background, still an amazing view. Of course, this pathway didn't used to exist over here. Used to be trees, planters, I think maybe even a building over here. I gotta look at pictures again to see what was here, but this view from the side of Spaceship Earth wasn't possible before. So it'll be interesting to see once they get all the construction done if this pathway remains or if they close it in. I would imagine it would remain. So I used to always say when I was way over here by the seas or even over here by Coral Reef and then you wanted to leave the park, you had to go all the way back around through the Interventions Plaza and back out that way. So it was a lot of extra walking to get all the way around to the front here. Here we are back in the windy zone. So it looks like there's not much line now, which is good. 
there's no fast passes so the line does tend to move quickly as long as there's not a stoppage for cleaning or anything like that but here's what I'm thinking on this I'll try and film most of the beginning section and then stop it towards the end with the screens and everything I want to see how it does on this Galaxy S20 Ultra phone and uh, depending on how it does I may substitute in my footage that I shot with the Sony camera so we'll see what happens but either way I'm going to show you some of the ride and I'm going to go ride it myself so hope you enjoy the ride wow I already smell Rome burning from here just imagine that it's pretty awesome it's like there's no wait time there so hopefully it's still running we'll check it out So even though this queue is basically completely outside except the loading area always pleasant to walk around even when it's hot because there's usually a breeze and uh, it is in the shade for the most part Watch the plants move there and see how hard the wind is blowing. And of course, as you look at the sign here, used to be sponsored by Siemens, but Siemens has discontinued their sponsorship, so they have taken that off the signs. Wow, the Rome smell is really strong today. Wonder how it'll be within the scene itself. I'll let you know. I love this mural. There's a hidden Mickey up there on planet Earth. Can you spot it? Please take small children by the hand and watch your step onto the moving platform. The platform is moving at the same speed as your time machine vehicle. Please take small children by the hand and watch your step onto the moving platform. The platform and your time machine vehicle are moving at equal speed. So cool to be able to do this and not have to worry about lag. One. You can see they are keeping one whole car or two between guests, so that's good. For your safety, remain seated with your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the vehicle. And please watch your children. Your time machine will slowly rotate backward and may stop momentarily. For your safety, remain seated at all times.
and then it will be your turn to create the world of tomorrow. Here in this hostile world is where our story begins. We are alone, struggling to survive, until we learn to communicate with one another. Now we can handle the team and survive together. really strong. <laughs> it's amazing. Much of our learning is destroyed, lost forever. It turns out that the copies of some of these books in the libraries of the Middle East have been watched over by Arab and Jewish scholars. Who is the first background system? The books are saved, and with them our dreams of the future.
The matrix scene that usually is here is actually off. The projections are not working. Attention, you are now rotating backward for your return to Earth. Please remain seated. For the first time in history, all of us can have a say about the kind of world we want to live in. The choices we have made for the past 30,000 years have been inventing the future one day at a time. And now, it's your turn. Let's have some fun creating the future, shall we? On your computer screen, ask a few questions for us. Then we'll show you a new world. Alright everybody, I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you outside. Alright, so here we are in the post-show area. And of course everything shut down due to sanitation reasons and not wanting people to touch things and, you know, risk contaminating each other or anything like that. But it's still a really neat, relaxing place to walk around. like without the projections on here it's pretty interesting of course this is called project tomorrow so hopefully eventually this will be reinstated but for now it's just a neat place to walk around and you hear kind of ethereal music in the background so it looks like this camera did pretty well on spaceship earth Nice not to have to worry about lag, but uh, probably not as good as the Sony, of course, but not bad for a phone, for sure.
I would imagine the audio was probably pretty hard to hear. I tried to put the phone as close to the headrest as I could, but the narration actually was what I was talking about being low. The narration was really, really low in volume and the ride background music was much, much louder. So even in person with my head right up against the headrest it was still hard to hear. So I apologize if you couldn't hear the narration, but still a really awesome ride. So we're going to kind of wrap up this relaxing stroll and vlog or relaxing vlog stroll whatever you want to call it up here just about where we started and again let me know what you think of this new format this is only the second time we've done this and remember if you like the regular relaxing strolls where there's no talking uh, we will be doing another one of those today so i'm going to go up into world showcase and uh, film a regular relaxing stroll so don't worry more of those will be coming also I probably will post this one first and then I'll post the World Showcase relaxing stroll as well. So definitely be on the lookout for those. Well, this was a lot of fun. I had fun filming it. I hope you had fun watching it. that's all for now for this relaxing vlog stroll around Epcot's future world. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please again remember to leave us a like and a comment as well as subscribe and hit that notification bell if you haven't already done so. I like to end in selfie mode here even though we didn't do it at the beginning. Uh, most of the strolls are just about looking at the parks and you know keeping my face out of it and uh, that's kind of how we like to keep it but nice to face the camera and say goodbye to everybody. So of course you can't see much of my face with the sunglasses and the mask but we do hope you enjoy it again. Let us know what you think, and we'll do more of these uh, if people enjoy them. So it's all up to you guys. All right, everybody. Also, be sure to check out our awesome sponsors, MickeyBlog.com and MickeyTravels.com for the best and free Disney vacation planning advice. And also, the best place to book your Disney vacation. Doesn't cost any more than a regular Disney vacation at MickeyTravels.com. So go check them out. Also, if you're thinking about moving to the Central Florida area, talk to Victor Naraki at CelebratingFlorida.com or Facebook.com slash Naraki Realtor and tell him that Resort TV One sent you. That's all for now, everybody. So for now, have a great big beautiful tomorrow. Bye-bye. Now that you've finished watching this video, be sure that you're subscribed so that you can get all of the latest updates. Also, check out some other great videos on our channel. Have a great big beautiful tomorrow. Bye-bye.